Okay, so I've got the otter's lunch in this bucket here. These are actually reused from our cafe. We use them up when uh, we have ice cream in, and then once they're left over, we reuse them for food buckets. So all of our animals know this means lunchtime. So let's go. Oh. Okay, we're gonna go see if the otter wants to wake up for his lunch. Let's go. So otters are normally nocturnal creatures. Um, so even though it's middle of the day right now, he is fast asleep. Or I think he is, we'll find out. And then it gets dark and, oh, hello. Hello. Loki. Loki, darling. Hello. whatever's inside. Loki himself has caught birds in here before. If they're living in a more coastal area, um, they're not sea otters, so they won't be going out to sea, but they will be in a river that perhaps might get some whelks, some crabs, some clams washing up into it, and they'll eat that too. Um, so they're not too fussy as long as it's some form of meat, but they do need to get a lot of food every single day. And I'm saying day, but really I mean every night, because they'll be spending most of their night hunting for food. So otters are really well adapted to be um, swimming. So you'll notice that Loki has a long body. He is actually in the mustelid family. So that means he's related to weasels, stoats, polecats, ferrets, pine martens, badgers, and the like. So he's in the weasel family. Um, so that's one of the reasons he has sort of that long shaped body. And it also means he's really streamlined when he's busy swimming. So it makes him a really fast swimmer. In fact, otters swim faster than humans. The fastest human swimmer, when he's busy breaking Olympic world records, swims at about six miles an hour. But otters can swim up to seven and a half miles an hour. So that's a lot faster than any human. That being said, they have a lot of adaptations to make them really good at swimming that humans don't normally have. So otters have a really long and powerful tail. It takes up about a third of their body and that's what helps them twist and turn and bend every which way. You'll notice that Loki is really good at diving. He's good at holding his breath when he's underwater and he can hold his breath for up to four minutes at a time. Now some humans can hold their breath for that long, um, but they usually have to train themselves. So if you try at home, and don't try for too, too hard, but you'll probably only be able to hold your breath about uh, 30 seconds to a minute. So they have a lot of adaptations. So they have a really big powerful tail, it helps them with their diving. And you'll notice that he's quite bendy, he can twist and turn and dive every which way, and he's very flexible as a result. Um, he, when he's underwater, not only is he able to hold his breath, but he has sort of a built-in stopper in his nose and his ears, and they're valves, they're just little flaps of skin, but essentially his nose is a self-stopping nose and his ears are self-stopping ears. So he's not getting water coming into his nose and ears when he's underwater, which is really, really handy. Furthermore, he can see pretty well underwater. You and I might need to use goggles, but Loki has a built-in set of goggles. It's called a nictating membrane, and it's a clear third eyelid. Um, a lot of animals have this. So for example, your cats and dogs, if you've ever caught them sleeping with their eyes half open, you'll notice they might have, it looks a bit weird because it goes sideways rather than up and down, but you'll notice a weird sort of clear film over their eyes. That's their nictating membrane. It protects their eyes when they sleep, but for Loki and Freya, it helps them to see clearly underwater so they can find their food. However, I did mention earlier that otters are nocturnal. So at nighttime, he can't find his food very well. And indeed, when I've done this on a night tour, unless I'm shining a torch in the water, he won't find his fish. And that's because we're not feeding him live fish. So in the wild, at nighttime, what otters are using instead of their eyesight is their whiskers. So whiskers are incredibly sensitive. It's essentially a touch organ, sensory organ, and think of each whisker as a fingertip. So it's a bit like having a whole bunch of fingertips on the end of your nose. 
otters also have whiskers kind of where you'd expect their little elbows to be. So they can feel where a fish is swimming just based on the vibrations that it makes as it swims through the water near them. Fish doesn't even need to brush up against their whiskers for them to know where it is and to be able to speed up, swim toward it, and catch it for their dinner. They also run quite fast on land. They run at about 13 miles an hour on land, so definitely going to beat me in a foot race. And probably my favorite thing about them is their waterproof fur. So you'll notice when Loki is running out on out of his holt, he's very shiny and fluffy. That's because his hair is dry and you can see how thick and soft it is. When he's in the water, he's got a double layer coat. So close to his body, he's got short fluffy hairs that act a bit like a fleece. They trap air, they help with buoyancy, they prevent water from reaching his skin. And then he's got long oily hairs in between that are a little bit like a raincoat on top of his fleece. So he's spending most of his night swimming. He will swim up to 10 miles every single night just to find enough food. But at the end of that night, in the early dawn, he's going to go back to his holt or his home. His holt is a burrow, it's usually on a river bank or it might be a hollowed out log, and he's going to need to dry off before he goes to bed. Because not only is it not nice to sleep in a puddle, but he might catch a cold if he doesn't dry off. So what he's going to do is he is going to shake all over just like a wet dog and if it's nice and sunny like today he might even roll around in some dry grass if there's any and then he's going to curl up in his bed and sleep the day away. Loki and Freya are both coming up on four years old so that makes them actually young adults for otters. Um, otters live into their late teens in captivity. It really varies but it can be around 17 years of age. So they're still quite young. We're really hoping that Loki and Freya will become parents this year. Um, if they do become parents, of course, stay tuned to our social media. We'd be very happy to welcome some young otter pups. If Freya did become pregnant, she'd have up to four pups in her litter, and they would absolutely be the cutest things ever. They would actually be living with her for the first year of their lives in the wild. So they wouldn't leave their parents until they're quite a bit older and they wouldn't even be swimming for the first two to three months of their lives. Their mum might have to actually push them into the pond to teach them how to swim. Here at Wildwood, if they have pups, we don't know if Loki will be a doting dad, but in the wild normally, river otters don't live together as a pair, so normally it would be up to mum to take care of them, and dad really wouldn't be in the picture. So I guess we'll have to wait and see how much Loki steps up if he's ever to become a dad. Thanks very much.